Welcome back. Today we're going to do a snowshoe hopper. This fly has, it's not really, a, I wouldn't go, this is more like a leaf hopper than it is a traditional hopper. It's a little variation as you can see. It's a variation of the Latorte hopper in some ways. It was just a, what I was looking for with this was a, a smaller profile early season hopper, but I wanted one that, that laid low in the water. One of the things that I'm not really, I mean, they, a lot of them fish, but I don't like the hoppers that sit so high up, and especially on these little ones, I wanted one that was really down in the water, but it was really hard to sink. And so, hence the, uh, the snowshoe, which I'll show you in a second here, and the deer hair head. But what you've got here is that you've got a fly that's really a great cross-dresser for a whole bunch of stuff. This could be a yellow sally, it could be a caddis, could be a tan caddis, could be a juvenile or a, you know early season hopper. Could be a lot of things, and it's a general fly. So it's not, I call it a hopper, but it's, you know, it's not really, as you can see, it's got the, the rubber legs, it's got the little hair head and the, and the, the wing. Uh, it, it's, it, it could be a lot of stuff, but the thing about it is, because it's general, it fishes, it fishes really almost year round. I mean, I, I've never really tried it super early in the spring, but it's definitely one of those flies. It's just, it's a go-to fly. It's kind of a confidence builder for me. I particularly like that fly early season, August, when the bugs are out and we're just transitioning. You know, you're losing all your mayflies and all your caddis, or there's still some, but not a lot. And you're just transitioning. And for some reason, it's just one of those flies that doesn't really, it's not completely one thing or another. And it's, you know, just a good general searching pattern. So, and it's, and it's uh, really simple to tie too. So it's a, it's a fun fly. <clears throat> a little bit, it'll be a little bit when you first start using your, your snowshoe it'll it'll mess with you a little bit but you'll you'll get used to it very quickly so uh, hook wise I'm going to use this 700 or the 7000 MFC hook uh, any any 2x 1x or 2x long you can go you can use a standard wire hook like this one I don't like to go much more than 2x on it because then you start getting into a little bit more it starts getting a longer this kind of I like these kind of short but <clears throat> any you know any hook you like Body-wise, I'm going to use Superfine. I'm going to use PMD. Uh, I, I do this in about three different shades, and I also do one in a, a really bright green. I don't, I don't sell that one. The one we sell mostly is, is this one here with this kind of goldy body that uh, I was showing earlier. But then the, 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 the commercial ties all have this uh, oval uh, gold. And so with the oval gold, uh, it, it's really good. It's quick. It's not what I used originally. Originally, I was using, I, I actually on my original ones, I used UV pearl and then gold. And sometimes I did both. I would I would wrap them together. But and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try to. I always try to keep it kind of close to the original when we do these things. And then you can you know you can go off and do whatever you want. Like I said the, the the factory started using this. They thought it was oval gold just because they saw it in there and they didn't know it was this twisted stuff. And so that's fine for your for your wing. It's going to be just snowshoe. You know this stuff right here. And this is really kind of a lost deal. You don't see it used very much. You still a lot of the eastern flies. You'll see eastern comparisons tied with these things. This is just an incredible, uh, I mean, this material is something everybody should learn to use because it floats like a champ. You cannot hurt it. You can, you can run this into a blender. You couldn't hurt this stuff. And so it's, and it just, it, it makes for a wing that you can, it greases really well. It takes to float really well. And so it, it's, it's very versatile. Uh, short, fine deer hair. It's going to be the last thing we use on that for the head and the collar. Uh, X caddis or, you know, compare it on hair, whatever you like, or, you know, just short, and then small centipede legs. Uh, I'm going to use the, the tan, the tan speckled legs here. Uh, again, whatever you like. Just just keep them small. I don't I, I don't even know if you necessarily need them. I just think they look cool, and I, I do like the way that they kick just a little bit extra out there. Uh, you could use flexi floss too. I've seen guys use that. So let's get on with this thing. So. Clean that up here for a second. Oh, forgot one thing. I'm going to be running 12 watt uh, GSP Semperfly. Uh, you could go, you know, because we're spinning the deer hair, I like to use, I don't like to go much under 50 GSP. 
they just or, or over that I mean just because you bulk and build up but I'm just using this you can use whatever you want I'm gonna use just a little bit of wax here just to start if you notice I just I just use the end of this just to get it going and I, the reason I do that is I don't like to have I don't like wax on my thread when I'm dubbing and I get asked that a lot <coughs> excuse me I get asked that a lot in the videos you know why I don't wax it and you're gonna I'm gonna show you why because when I do put too much wax on there and I start dubbing I try to push it forward because I'm always moving it back and forth and it just sticks I mean that wax just makes it stick and I don't want that I want to be able to adjust it so I'm gonna keep this one with the kind of the original form so I'm gonna use one strand of this stuff this is this is the crystal I'm gonna use the UV this is just crystal accent or crystal flash whatever you know whatever you want to use but it's it's the way we put it on we're gonna we're gonna put it in a dubbing loop and twist it and that's just to make it oval it's all that's all I'm gonna do is just kind of make it round if you want to use four strands of this that's fine too or two strands you'll end up with four this one I pulled out of there and kind of kinked it all up. So I'm going to tie this in right now, and I've got I cut those two ends, and I'm just tying it in. You see, it's got a loop back here, and I'm I'll work back here. Just leave that sit, and so I wanted to be out. Of, that's why I just put a little bit of wax, and I wanted to be out of that when I started. And so when we dub this thing, just like always, you've, you've seen if you've watched any of the videos. If this floats right here, you can see it floating, that's the amount of dubbing you want. If you take too much dubbing and you let it go, <clears throat> it's going to drop. That's not good. So we're just going to pick, you just, just take your time on this. Get used to using small amounts of this stuff. And so you can just, you just spin a little bit at a time. And you'll notice, and I got asked that in a, two or three videos ago about, you know, how, how come you're, doesn't fight you and it's they ask how do you, you know, their hands were dry and you see I do that just I don't really get your hand wet just enough so that you can grab this stuff and it doesn't spin in your fingers and what I'm looking for is a thin you can see I've got a thin body I'm going to taper this as it goes forward and I'm going to I'm going to do that I'm going to start forward I'm going to come back and go back like that back and forth just so I'm going to come forward and I'll run out of dubbing here, and then I'll start back. I'll go all over again. I want a tight dub, and, and I preach about this a lot because uh, there's, you don't, there's no such thing as dry fly dubbing. So it's not like it floats. It just doesn't absorb water, right? And so the tighter this is around that thread, the more fibers that are super tight, wrapped really tight around that thing, the less water absorbs into it. So if you've got a really open dub and it's really, you know, not really tight around the thread, when it goes, the water's just going to migrate through that, and then your fly is going to sink. So you're just you're just trying to build that into your your body. So I'm coming back here, leaving a little bit of taper. Start back forward. Almost made it. Just a little bit more. And I'm working on that one third, two third things. Two thirds abdomen, one third thorax. Uh, there we go. The other thing I get asked a lot in the videos, and they, they just keep forgetting to, uh, at the end of this fly, I'm not going to glue this, and people are always asking me, <laughs> I never see you glue your head. Most of it's expediency. I, I do on my own, right? And when I'm, and I would on these two, I'd finish it off, or I, and I'm going to show you a way to do it on this one, because we're not going to have room for a head, and I'll show you how to glue it, but Yes, I do glue those things, especially on my drive. I just, I like the finish. I like the way it looks. I just don't do it here because it's kind of a superfluous, superfluous move. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Okay, so now, what do I do with that dubbing tool? Now we're going to take this, this, I, I left this in a loop. So I just, I'm going to hook it in here. I left it in a loop. I'm going to spin this to the left. I like this to be countered because it doesn't unwrap as much and it stays oval. So I'm going to spin this to the left. And just until you get a nice, you know, tight oval. And then I'm just going to, you don't have to reef on this. Just come forward and just put a little bit of an accent in there. If you're using gold, you would see it 
much more than you do with this. But I, when I first did these, I don't, and I'm not positive other than I wanted a little reflection, but when I looked at the, when I looked at Hopper's, I don't see a lot of, you, you'll see the segment, but I just, I wanted something that broke it up, you know, just a little bit from just your standard bodies, but I didn't go crazy on it. But that, that's all, that's you, you can do whatever you want. Now I'm going to take this snowshoe, and you can go in here. I tend to go forward in here, kind of in the middle more than I do at the very end. You get, when you get to the very end, you've got a lot longer tip hair down here on the guard. I tend to be back here where they've rubbed them off a little bit. Just gives me a little bit more consistency in the wing lengths. And <clears throat> it's very, I'm going to show you on this, it's very thick. This stuff is, I mean, this, and it's made to be, this is made to repel water. This is something that lives in the, you know, in the cold. And so it's not supposed to get wet. So I'm going to come in here <clears throat> and I'm going to get, I'm going to separate this just like that so I can go right down to the body or to the, you know, by the hide, and I'm going to cut off a piece of that right there. You see, I just cut that up, and I'll pull it out, and so basically, I got a nice, uh, even cut, and that's going to, when it comes out, it's going to keep my tips of the hair pretty well even. I'm not going to have to fight this a lot. So I'm going to come in here, spin that around, and we're going to keep this, grab it by the, you want to, you don't want to lose all of this under fur with this. I like to keep a little bit, but all I do is I kind of do it with my hands. I can't have so much bulk that I, I build this giant buildup right there when I put the wing in, but I don't want to take so much away that I don't get all this flotation out of this hair. So come in here, just, you got to have a, where you can clean it up. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to put this, just so it hangs back, maybe an eighth of an inch past the barb of the hook. You want it a little bit back because that's your flotation. You know, it's kind of like, this is kind of your tail. So when your hook cuts through the water like that, boom, it lands and it hits on these things and it holds it there in place. So that's a pretty good amount right there. Again, this stuff, if you haven't used this, you really, really, really got to get used to using this stuff because it is, it's a phenomenal wing. It's a great for a lot of mayfly stuff. It's incredible for emergers. It's just, an, you, know, you see people using CDC a ton. You need to try this stuff. I mean, CDC gets wet. This stuff doesn't get wet. It keeps its shape. It's, it's even underwater. So you can almost see the bubbles in it if you're going to try it on an emerger. So now I'm going to go in here, spin my thread to my, to my right clockwise spin so that it lays back. See how it lays back right there? That, so you don't fight it. So I've got this little bit of snowshoe right here. Come in, one, two, and then go right over top of it, just clean it up. Oops, slid off a little bit right there. That's the thing about this stuff is it's, it's, it's slippery, right? And so you're not using a lot. See how much, I got a really tight little, and this would be a good spot if you, I don't really dig glue and stuff while I'm going like this so much, but if, when you first start doing it, just a little bit of drop of glue right there wouldn't kill you. It would it'd be, it'll just, it'll save you from having your hair full out when you first start doing it. But just try to get used to doing that little tiny bit, really anchored. But look how thick this wing is right now. And, that, and you saw when I put it in, it doesn't look like much. It's all this building that under fur right there. So now we're going to take some short fine deer hair. And I like this stuff to be in the, I like this to be in the, I already cut this. I like to have this to be in a lighter phase just so I can see it. I mean, you can do however you want to do it, but I'm just looking for the lighter hair. I already cut some and stacked it. Okay, now you want a, a, a relatively significant collar here. Again, some of it's for some of it's so you can see it, but a lot of this is so it, when it comes down, it's kind of setting there and it, it helps block the drop and helps stop it from going through the water. And kind of stops it when the wings touch, right? It just it's another thing that's gonna help make this fly float. So I'm gonna go in here, take your sample. You know, I like the wing to go about the collar, I mean to go about halfway down the wing, maybe not quite that much, but don't have a skimpy little collar. You got a couple of stragglers right there. So I'm gonna come in here. We're going to do this just like we do all of our all of our collar sets. I don't care if you're doing a three-aught sex dungeon or if you're doing a size 
20 elk hair caddis, you do these wings exactly the same way every time when you do this collar. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to decide where it's going to go, right there. I'm going to transfer my hand. We're not going to use this as part of the head. I'm going to cut that in a nice, nice square cut, just like that. So it's nice and clean. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to spin my thread to my right. Come over, you can see how much I've caught. I'm holding, I'm going to put, just let that sit there. I'm holding my fingers really tight. So I've got a hold of the body and I've got the wing sitting here. You see it's not moving. I'm not allowing the hair to go around any side, either side of the, uh, the body. And so my left, my thumb and my forefinger have got a pretty good grip on the body and the wing. I've got two turns of thread and I'm not going to do, and I hold that nice and tight and pull it. And you see that perfect little elk hair caddis right there. That's what you're looking for. And it's nice and tight, it's going to stay on top, and then go right through it with another one. And you can see, perfect. I've got a nice build up here. I've got, and I'm going to set my legs right inside that. And it just gives me a, it gives me a good anchor point. <clears throat> so, take these. I've just got one two inch long piece or so. I'm going to lay that over, cut it in half. I'm going to set these right in, I'm going to set them right in the collar. One, two turns, no pressure at all. I'm just going to set these off to the side, just like that. So I just, I roll one, roll it the other one, right? Pull it in, anchor, see I'm right inside that. I still got, I didn't, I'm not much pressure. Don't, don't, don't force it, this is rubber. So you put two relatively tight turns, it flares it out, it's where you want it, but if you reef on it, it's going to try to go like this, then it'll start kicking. You only have to, it's rubber, so you're compressing that rubber. You don't have to have a ton of uh, pressure on it. Now I'm going to go right in front of that, right there. If you want, you can take, oh, I'm out of straws. I'm going to take this straw, just take a straw, piece of straw, cut it lengthwise, and you can take this and wrap it right over top of that and get it all out of your way. Now we're just going to do a, we're just going to spin ahead real quick here. I want to show you something about spinning deer hair with a uh, spinning deer hair with fine thread. Uh, Jack Gartside showed me this technique oh, probably 15, 20 years ago, I guess. And then uh, the other day, I was watching Davy McPhee. Uh, just a, this guy's just a freak show. He is so good; it's crazy. And I was watching him, and I noticed he does the same thing. And so we're going to spin this. We're going to set it in, we're going to come in here, we're going to put one loose turn around this, like that, and we're letting, what we're doing is we're letting that hair work around the hook. We're trying to let it work around the hook, right? And so then we're just going to give it, we're going to let it spin, I've got one and a half, or, or two turns of thread around here, I'm just going to pull this and let it wrap, it, it already is going around, but then it's kind of catching up there. Get on there, there we go. Now, what I want you to see is this is how Davey, uh, or not Davey, uh, Jack, uh, he was showing me how to do this. And he would actually use, before we had GSP, right, he'd use 6 aught or 10 aught thread. And he would tie in his hair. And how he did this, how he would wrap this body, it would make his head completely impervious. You, could you, you couldn't move it. You couldn't twist it. And every single hair, he's going to go, and I want you to watch what it is. I'm going to do progressive. I've got to get, get that. I've got one spin. And he'd go right through it like this. Now watch those stand up. Watch the hair stand up. And every one, he's, he's catching with his thread right forward to the head. And what that does is it's, it, the thread goes around and it stands a hair up. Boom, stands it up, stands it up, stands it up. And he would go right through it, just progressively as close as he could. One, two, three, and the hair would go pop, 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 pop. Get to the front. Absolutely indestructible head. Didn't have to deal with the spinning of the hair, none of that. Just would stand it up. But the beauty of it is you could use a super, super fine thread and get a really durable body. So I'm already up to the head. And what you're going to see, I'm going to move that just back a little bit. I don't want this, you can pack those as tight as you want. All right, so there's the head. You can see how it stood that hair up just beautifully. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to just whip finish this. Now, on hair heads like this, this is just a simple technique to, 
if you if you don't want to go in and glue this, you could do, before you finish right now, you could take just a little bit of super glue, put it on, and just put it on your thread, just like this. Just take this and put it on your thread right here, and then just go in and do two or three wraps and set it. I always do my whip finish first, but that's an easy way to get it, and then just hold it, right? And it'll be locked. Boom, done. So now I'm just going to come in here. Wrong glasses. Can't see now. That was amazing I got away with that. So now I'm going to get just kind of the rough trim of this thing because I've got my legs back. I've got a nice clean, you can see that, that, that straw is right there. I can, I can actually rest right against it. Come in here, get a nice clean cut. And, I, and uh, this is one, on these little flies like this, I don't, I frequently don't uh, use my blades. Most of the time I'm gonna use a razor blade to do this. But on these things, I don't know, I just kinda like to, kinda like to use the scissors. So I'm gonna just, um, get a hold of your legs, Am I blocking that, Jeremy? Nope, you. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna get a, just gonna, just take your time, just kind of cut these things out. Just get the legs out of the way so you're not cutting them off. We're gonna have a nice little, and, and you wanna bowl this head, you wanna, the head, if you look at a hopper, even a little leaf hopper, it's got a broad head, they're kinda of shaped like that, you know, and they're really kinda of square. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a nice, Kind of square head on this thing, but the, remember that's a lot of your flotation right there. This head is, it's really hard to sink these things because of that. Got a nice collar, I'm just going to move this around, let those legs go where they will right there. Look around. Now I've got a little bit of a build up right there of that deer hair. I don't want to obscure my body. And what you'll find is when you tip these things over, and you'll, of all the videos you'll see me say talk about this, um, the fish sees the fly from the bottom, doesn't, never sees the top of the fly, that's all we look at. Turn the thing upside down, and now is when you're going to see, and you'll look over top of it, and then you can come in here and just grab those legs every time. And I, for me, virtually every time I turn a fly upside down like this, I see that I'm not, even though on the top it looks like, yeah, I'm really dead on, right? I've got that thing really clean. Flip it over, I'm always off on one side or the other. It's one side, it's longer. But I don't notice it from the top like I do when I flip the thing over on the bottom. And that really doesn't mean much other than when I look at your flies and go, how come you didn't do that? But that's pretty clean right there. We're looking pretty good. I actually, people always want to figure out how to do that really fast. I don't want to. I, I really dig trimming these flies. I mean, it's, I'm doing this on purpose, so I'm trying to get it. It's just fun for me to, to sit here and do that and just trim them out. And not looking for a speed thing on this. On these things, I like the front legs shorter. I pull them into here like that. Just They'll, they'll sit right in there. And I like the back leg to be about the length, so I go like here. Just pull it back, don't stretch it. Just pull it back and cut it about at the wing length. Don't, if you stretch that, if you stretch it, it's gonna recoil, obviously it'll be really short. So, air a little long on those wing, on these legs. So that is the snowshoe hopper, kind of the original pattern, original style. Can you see that, Jeremy? His head's still, I, mean, I could do a little bit more trimming on this head, but I'm not going to, just so. But you can see it's got the nice rubber legs, got the big bushy wing that's not really, from underneath you don't really see it, but from the top you see this beautiful amount of hair that just goes and sits down. You can pop this thing, you can skitter it, which you really should. You should learn to skitter these things just a little bit. That leg will keep kicking. Things virtually impossible to sink because of the deer hair and the snowshoe. And it's, like you said, it's pretty straightforward fly. It's pretty fast. Really good cross dresser. A lot like Johnny. Uh, I mean... No, it's, a, it's really good. It can be a lot of stuff. Be a yellow sally, be a, can be a caddis, could be a leaf hopper, can be a lot of stuff. It's one of my favorite bugs to fish in the fall, you know, late summer. Uh, it's really just a, it's a really good search pattern. Hope you like it. Hope it helps you out.